All right, so this is uh, 4.1. Uh, we're going to start talking about probability um, and the probability that you're, pr you're more likely to have been uh, maybe sus suspecting or expecting to come out of a statistics course. Uh, here's where we start to talk about probabilities like when we hear people say there's an 80% chance of rain today or uh, chances of making a field goal are one in three. These are the kinds of things that we talk about. The, the probability is the likelihood of something occurring. Um, and while we use percentages a lot to communicate probabilities to people, uh, we are going to use the decimal equivalent for those probabilities or a fraction. So like 80% probability or chance that it will rain, we would express in our, prob in our statistics course as 0.8 probability. So uh, you know, th there's a way to communicate to the public and a way that we communicate amongst ourselves. Um, a probability experiment is an experiment where it's a, a chance process that leads to well-defined results that we call outcomes. So flipping a coin, rolling a die, um, again, to the weather tomorrow uh, is a chance process, right? It's maybe it rains, maybe it doesn't, uh, and it's going to have a de definite result. So it did rain or it did not rain. Um, an outcome is a result of a single trial of the probability experiment. A sample space is all the possible outcomes. You might have gotten the heads when you flipped a coin, but tails would be considered part of the sample space it's a possible option. And then an event consists of outcomes. Okay, so uh, the probability of an event occurring would be, well, what's the likelihood that those outcomes that were part of the event happen? Uh, some examples of sample spaces, if you toss a coin, it's heads or tails, you roll a die, it's one through six. You answer a true false question, guessing the answer could be true or false. And then tossing two coins, each coin could be heads or tails, so you start to get more options if we roll two die, there's more options as we, or two dice as we think about those. All right, there are three types of probability. Uh, there's a, what's called a classical or theoretical. It's what you expect or could calculate, excuse me, it's what you could calculate the outcome to be without actually performing the experiment. Uh, this is what we would uh, describe when we're talking about uh, uh, flipping a coin, uh, doing things like that. Um, classical probability is named so, is named that because it's the first type of probability that was studied formally by mathematicians back in the 16 and 1700s. Um, it, it works or assumes that all outcomes in the sample space are equally likely to occur. Okay, so these kinds of um, probabilities are things that are um, where everything is pure chance and everything is just as likely. Okay, so that's a really important idea to, to kind of express or to understand. When we talk about this theoretical or classical, okay, um, each has an equally likely chance of occurring. And we don't have to perform the experiment because everything is just as likely as the other. We can actually calculate that out. Whereas an experimental uh, probability or an empirical probability is what happens when we actually do an observation. Okay, So if we were to go through and actually uh, perform a calculation or perform an experiment and see what happens as that experiment takes place, okay, an empirical probability is going to happen as we look at, um, excuse me, um, as we look at the um, Results. So how many times did you get heads? How many times did you roll a three out of the number of attempts you did? While we can say that we'd expect heads to come up 50% of the time, if we actually did a study, did an experiment, we might find that the number of outcomes wasn't a 50-50 split with a flipping a coin. Now we also know that the more we do it, the further we go, the more attempts we go, the more likely we are to reach the 50-50 but experimental, we actually tested it. Uh, whereas subjective, okay, this last variety, subjective, is when we're using an educated guess or estimate. Uh, we use things to predict or make a guess, uh, but realistically we're not calculating like we would with a cal classical or theoretical, and we're not taking an example, we're not taking and gathering data like we would in the experimental. This is us making a, a best guess. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that a little later in the, the video. Some examples of uh, theoretical
theoretical probabilities that we could calculate would be rolling a die, um, rolling two die. And in this chart, you can see the outcome of every option. You could roll two ones, a one and a two, but a two and a one and a one and a two are only distinguishable because the two die are separate. So we both have two one and one two that essentially have the same outcome, but they are there are two ways to get that outcome. Um, and so um, it's important that we're able to look at that chart and see all the different ways that things could come out. Um, just one second. Sorry about that. Hopefully I'm not too distracted. Um, uh, we have a tree diagram here. So we have the dice. Obviously there's the different possible combinations of rolling two die. Uh, and we have a tree diagram. When we're making decisions about the likelihood of something happening. This would be an example of a family having three kids. We want to know how many boys and girls they might have. Well, if you plan to have three children ahead of time, there's a chance you have a boy or a girl on your first child. That's what this first branch of the tree means. Now, once you've had that first child, maybe it was a boy, maybe it was a girl, then each of those will branch out for our second child. I could have a boy, boy, or a boy, girl. I could have had a girl, boy, or a girl, girl. And this continues to split as we go down the line. So this allows us to organize our thoughts and figure out how many different ways there are to get to the end. You can see there are eight different pathways. Each pathway as we split creates more options and as we follow those out we can figure out how many different possible ways we could create that list. Another thing that we're going to reference a lot is the standard play, the center deck of 52 playing cards. We have four what are called suits, hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. Half of them are red, half of them are black. There are three what we call face cards, jack, queen, and king, they'll be referred to as face cards. So that's a total of 12 out of the 52. And so we'll ask a lot of questions about what's the likelihood or probability of doing specific things with a deck of cards. For instance, if a family has three, girl, three children, find the probability that two of the three children are girls. If we look at our list up here, we can see that we had two girls in that situation. We had two girls in that situation and in that situation. And so we can say that our probability of having two girls out of the three children is equal to three out of the eight options, which is the same as 0.375. We aren't going to write that as a percentage. We'll write it as a decimal. And use a percentage if we have to communicate to the general public. But amongst the stat statistics work that we do, we're just going to have uh, decimal for that. Okay, the second question we might ask is what's the probability of getting a black 10 when drawing a card from a deck? <coughs> Mush. No, excuse me. I said bless you to me. Alright, how about that? If I want to get a black 10, there are two black 10s in a deck of 52, which is equivalent to uh, 1 out of 26. You can list it as 1 out of 26 or give us the approximate decimal 0.0 I think it's 385. Uh, it might go on beyond that, but roughly that value. Um, the approximations. Probability rules, a couple things. Probability will always be something between 0 and 1 inclusive. If something cannot occur, its probability is 0. If it's certain to occur, its probability is 1. And the sum of all the probabilities of possible outcomes is equal to 1 uh, for all, a specific sample. Okay. Uh, the words and and or are very specific and mean a lot of things in uh, statistics. We have to be careful how we do it. And typically means at the same time. So if I talk about drawing a student at random and having them be um, female and having brown hair, the word and means that girl needs to have brown hair. Uh, now the word or um, would mean has two different options, two different ways to describe it. It can be what's called inclusive, which means that there is an overlap. Or it can be something what is, that is uh, exclusive, meaning that there is no overlap. So an example of that would be like, I want a girl or someone with brown hair. I might take a boy with brown hair or a girl with blonde hair. But or could be either. But it can also be someone who does both, has brown hair and is a girl. So the or could be inclusive, meaning there's an overlap. Or it could be exclusive when neither event can happen at the same time as the other. For instance, I want a boy or a girl from my class. Well, you're either one or the other. 
Um, as we go down and look at some of these options, you draw a card from a deck, probability of it being black and an eight. You know, there are, um, uh, let's see, of the black cards and the eights, there's only two out of the 52. And so our probability, similar to the black 10, is uh, one out of 26 or 0 0.0385. If we talk about the probability of rolling a pair of dice and getting a 3 or a 12, that's exclusive. You can't be both at the same time. And there are two ways to get a 3, and there's one way to get a 12. That's a total of three ways out of 36. Okay. And if we did the probability of drawing a card from a deck and selecting a queen or a heart, well, I have four queens, and there's 13 hearts. But because of the overlap, I have to be careful. That's 17 options, but really the probability is just 16 out of 52 because the queen that is a heart can't be counted in both groups. You can only count it once. So it's important when we do these overlaps to remember that you don't want to double count. Um, if we want to know the probability due to an experiment, okay, what we have to do, um, sorry, what we have to do Today, um, or sorry, what we have to do for this type of experiment. Sorry, I'm getting a lot of messages and I have to respond to them um, for timetable. But um, if we look at this experiment, we have 50 people. 21 had type O, uh, 22 had type A, and so on. The person having a type O blood, to do the probability of that, okay, I would figure out how many have type O, which is 21, and I would divide it by the total number of options, which is 50. Okay. And that's going to give me a 0.42 probability. All right, so we've got a probability that a person has type O blood of being 0.42. If we want to do the probability of someone having A or B, this is either case is okay and acceptable. So we're going to take A, which is uh, 22 people, and type B, which is 5, to give us 27 over 50, or 0.54. So we can find these probabilities when it's an and or an or by just simply combining those, those groups. Um, a subjective probability, remember, is using when we're using educated guesses to estimate um, and using an opinions and things like that and then exact information. So weather forecasting, um, predicting weather or sporting outcomes, things like that are all examples of uh, subjective. The complement of an event will sometimes be written as E with a bar over the top of it. If it's uh, used, it's just a way to describe that, okay, if the probability of getting a three when you roll a die is one out of six, the probability of not getting a three is the complement. So for instance, if people live in an industrialized country is one-fifth of the world, the probability that a person does not live in an industrialized country would be one minus one fifth. This is just a way of saying, hey, we have to have a hundred percent probability, and if one fifth is that you live industrialized, then we know four fifths would be the probability that you don't live in an industrialized part of the, the world. All right, good luck, guys, and we'll see you in class.